Okay, today we're going to be proving angle relationships. So this is similar to the segment relationships we did earlier. Uh, we've got, uh, we're going to be proving lines about angles today. So previously we've identified and used special pairs of angles. We did that back in chapter one. And now we're going to write proofs involving supplementary and complementary angles and uh, proofs involving congruent and right angles. First of all, there's the protractor postulate. So here's another postulate for you to add to your notes. And it simply says that given any angle, the measure can be put into one to one correspondence with real numbers between 0 and 180, because that's what the protractor measures. And also the angle addition postulate, a lot like the segment addition postulate of last lesson. D is interior. Remember discussing interior and exterior of the angle? So D is interior of angle A, B, C if and only if the measurement of angle A, B, D plus the measurement of angle D, B, C is equal to the measurement of angle A, B, C. So let's play with this a little bit. It says uh, using a protractor a construction worker measures that the angle a beam makes with a ceiling is 42 degrees. What is the measure of the angle the beam makes with the wall? Okay, first of all, the ceiling and the wall make a 90 degree angle. You can check that out. Just look up at your room. So we're going to let angle 1 be the angle between the beam and the ceiling, and angle 2 be the angle between the beam and the wall. It might really help if you were to stop and draw that so that you can see what it is we're talking about. So we know that the, me the measure of these two angles together are going to make a 90. And we're going to use the angle addition postulate to tell us that. We know that the measurement of angle 1 is 42. We're given that. So we substitute it in. Then we subtract 42 from both sides. So the measurement of angle 2 is equal to 48. So the beam makes a 48 degree angle with the wall. Time to check your progress. Find the measurement of angle 1 if the measurement of angle 2 is equal to 58 and the measure of angle J, K, L is 162. So pause the video and work this for a moment. Okay, so we know that the measurement of angle 1 plus the measurement of angle 2 is equal to the measurement of J, K, L, right? You see that? And we're also given that the measurement of angle 2 is 58. So the measurement of angle 1 plus, the me plus 58 is equal to the 162 that this entire angle equals. So we subtract 58 from both sides. So the measurement of angle 1 is 104. Okay, so we have some uh, supplement and complement theorems for you to add to your theorems page. So let's use the supplement or complement. I'm going to pause just for a moment so you can read this. Go ahead and draw yourself a picture. So make a sketch of the situation. So the time is 4 o'clock and the second hand bisects the angle between the hour and the minute hands. And we're told that this angle is 120 degrees. So if this is an angle bisector, what do each of these measure? Did you come up with 60? Good deal. So the angles are congruent by definition of angle bisector, so each angle is 60, so both angles are 60 degrees. You can use the angle addition postulate to check your answer. Both of them together equals 120. If they're each 60, will that give you 120? Well, sure enough, 120 is equal to 120. So that was easy to check our answer. Time to check your progress using this diagram. So pause just a moment. It might help, um, I always redraw the figure and label what it is, is that is given. Okay, you know that BAC is 20, DAE is 20, and you're told that BAE is 90. So I just took 90 minus this 40, and I came up with 50 is the measurement of CAD. Now you have some properties of angle congruence that you need to copy into your notes on properties. There's also the symmetric property of congruence that you can add to your notes on properties. 
and there are congruent theorems that you need to add. There's the congruent supplements and the congruent complements. So you can add this to your theorems page. And you abbreviate angles. You can rewrite it with an angle symbol and the S inside. So angles supplementary to the same angle or congruent angles are congruent. And this could be your reason that you put in your proof. It's a lot shorter than trying to write this all out. Or angles complementary to the same angle or congruent angles are congruent. And here they are proving uh, one case of uh, congruent supplements theorem. So if you'd like to study that for a little bit, here we're told that 1 and 2 are supplementary and that 2 and 3 are supplementary. We're given that. The definition of supplementary angles mean they're equal to 180. Since each of these are equal to 180, they're equal to each other. So they substitute it in instead of 180. Also, isn't that the transitive property? Um, angle 2 is equal to angle 2. That's reflexive. So if we subtract angle 2 out, they have the same measure. That makes uh, angle 1 and angle 2 equal to each other. So we can say that they're congruent. So now we're going to do a proof using congruent complement or supplement theorems. I really advise you to write down what is given, that angle 1 and angle 4, four form a linear pair, and that the measurement of angle 3 plus the measurement of angle 1 is 180. Uh, write down what you're going to prove, prove that angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent, and draw your figure, because it's going to vanish in a little bit. All right, so we write down what is given, and angle 1 and angle 4 are supplementary because linear pairs are supplementary. Angle 3 and angle 1 are supplementary by definition of supplementary angles. So they're equal to 180, so they're supplementary. These are both, uh, 3 and 4 are both supplementary to the same angle, so they are supplementary to, e they're congruent to each other since they're supplementary to the same angle. Okay, very good. Time to check your progress again. I would draw your picture, make a note of what's given. These two form a linear pair, these two form a linear pair, and we're told that angle RYA and angle AXZ are congruent. We're trying to prove that angle NYR and angle AXY are congruent. So pause for a moment and get that information before you go to the next page. So which choice com correctly completes the proof? Let you study it for a little bit. Well, if we notice NYR and RYA are supplementary and AXY and AXZ are supplementary, so Supplementary angles supplementary to the same angle or two congruent angles are congruent. So they were supplementary to congruent angles. There is the vertical angles theorem. And so it tells us that vertical angles are congruent to each other. So one's congruent to three and two's congruent to four. So we're going to use that vertical angles theorem in order to just uh, to, to solve and find the measurement of angle one and the measurement of angle 2. We're asked to justify each step, so we're, tr we're told we need to write a proof. So angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 by the vertical angles theorem. The measurement of angle 1 is equal to the measurement of angle 2, definition of congruent angles. Now we're going to substitute in the values, the expression that they give us telling us each measurement of the angles uh, equal to. You might want to write this down because it's fixing to vanish on us. So we added the D's. We moved them to both sides. Now we're going to add 32 to both sides. We're going to divide both sides by 3. So now we're going to check our answer. 69 minus 32, it's 37. And 175 minus 2 times 69, is also 37. So yes, they're both equal to 37. Time to check your progress. So pause the video and work the problem, then come back and we'll check your answer. 
Okay, they're vertical angles. So did you set 3B minus 23 is equal to 142 minus 4B? So you're going to come up with 7B is equal to 175. So B is equal to 25, but you're not done there. Then you need to go back and substitute 3 times 25 minus 23 and 152 minus 4 times 25. You're going to come up with an answer of they're each equal to 52. Very good. Now the last thing to add into your theorems for today is the right angle theorem. So pause the video and get these added to your theorems. We already know about perpendicular lines forming four right angles and that all right angles are congruent. They're all equal to 90, right? And perpendicular lines form congruent adjacent angles. Okay, so 2 and 4 and 1 and 3, they're um, congruent. Uh, if two angles are congruent and supplementary, then each angle is a right angle. Okay, so they're congruent to each other, but they're equal to 180, so they have to be 90 each. And if two congruent angles form a linear pair, then they are right angles. Okay, very good. So, get those copied into your notes, and you're done.